There's a new trend among AAA games to offer early access as a perk of pre-ordering. Maybe you get 24 hours, maybe you get three days of access to the game before people who only bought the regular version. Today we're going to talk a bit about that, how we feel about it, and whether it's a good or a bad trend. My name is Moriarty, and with me today on this Crubcast is Chris Mykonos fan and Nico All Hail Buckets. Today was Gamescom. Did you notice yes. any games offering early access perks, Chris? You know, I think by the time most of the game trailers ended, my eyes had already glazed over. But I can think of a game that comes out today at the time of recording that is offering early access today, and that is Hit Game Concord. <laughs> One of the best games hit ever. Game, yeah, man, the hit game. There's also, I can think of, um, Sonic X Shadow Generations, which did have a GameStrong con trailer today, not part of the event. That is also doing a three-day early access for a Sonic game. It's definitely there, right? Like, games are doing this, it's becoming a thing. Every um, major AAA game that I can think of recently, at least there's some talk about, are they going to do early access? Is, you know, Call of Duty going to do early access? Is the new Ubisoft game going to do early access? Is the new EA game going to do early access? A and it becomes a thing. Nico, you watch Gamescom with me for a little bit. I know we mm. saw it several times in just the first hour. Yeah, I mean, I think the the one that we started talking about it with was Path of Exile, too, um, and we were just like, yeah, you know, I, I think where we'd spoken about the difference between a single player game being early access and a multiplayer game being early access, um, and I do think that kind of resonated with me because you know, a single player game being early access is one thing, but like a multiplayer game being early access. And then when your friends come in to play it with you, you're just so much higher level than them. Like it just kind of breaks the experience. And I don't think it makes for an excellent time overall. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'd say. Yeah. I actually have a, a short anecdote, right? Uh, that, that perfectly plays into this. In my Discord, we had a big community of people who were very excited for The Division 2. We all played the beta together. We were super excited for this game. We'd already put in like 200 hours into The Division 1. I had a big clan. We had like 50 people who bought this game, right? Which I had an affiliate link, so maybe I was a little biased, but Ooh. I was very excited to play this game with everybody. <laughs> and then they gave me, because I was, you know, the, the influencer, uh, they gave me the like $150 pack of the game, mm -hmm. um, which came with three days of early access. And this is what killed that game in my community. We were playing The Division every single day. Every single day. When the beta happened, we were playing it every single day. It was like 12 hours of The Division all day. There was always someone playing the game in the chat. But then suddenly you have this three day period where only the people who paid more money were playing and suddenly everybody else who jumped in they they were you know 30 40 levels below you because three days i mean if it's a game that you're really into that might be 20 or 30 hours of gameplay i'm at the end game before you i'm yeah. at the end game before you even start the game yeah Dude, it's so misfortunate, right? Because it feels like if you want people to rally around your game as like a community point, which I would argue that really any online game that's sort of like the end game, right? Is like, we want our place to be the platform. Like people are going to be on here all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have a dedicated community, if you want to, you know, dare I say farm for whales, like Ooh. you got to make your ecosystem habitable and i feel like early access is sort of the antithesis to that do you guys agree i do i do i really do and i actually think that i would be a little bit more militant than you in saying that even in single player it's bad right because if let's say you know the the most anticipated single player game is coming out and it's sonic shadows right <laughs> um i can go and i can pay an extra $20 to play it early, or I can go watch somebody stream it. And now mm. perhaps I'm less interested in buying it, especially if they hit any sort of, you know, issues or snags. There was a, a study a while ago 
that I thought was really fascinating because it changed how I thought about some of this stuff, which is that demos actively uh, uh, hinder game sales. Right. If Interesting. A game, yeah, so if a game has a demo available, that demo will 100% of the time lower the number of game sales, right? I can't think of a game that I've ever played the demo for that I then bought. It always like lowers usually... game sales. Like, across the board, there was a study. It always lowers game sales. And it's because the people who have this sort of, like, super hype, but it doesn't click with them, uh, yeah. or these people who have this sort of crazy hype and they get into it and now i've got it i've played it. i've done it right like you're hurting both of those groups both the people who would have played it but it didn't quite click with them but maybe they would have kept it and bought you know bought the game and yeah. the people who have that sort of i don't know funko pop-esque need to to have the thing to experience the thing but now that i've done it i've done it i don't need it anymore and so you end up losing sales and I have yeah. to imagine that early access doesn't actually help sales when it's showing up on streaming. I think it's a very short-sighted, give me an extra $10 now so that I can please people for this quarter, but that game is going to suffer for it. I, I think almost every time. I think Shadow Generations is a great example, which I'm just going to refer to as that. It's Sonic X Shadow Generations, but that's easier, right? Is, that's is that the the new one that we were looking at the uh offerings for or is that yes it's the new 250 dollars one they just announced from limited oh, run games i already yeah, forgot that's that. what i was right yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah i was like when did we look okay yeah that that's the one um that's gotcha. you know as a sonic game you will burn through that in three hours right that is very easily disseminated out to people so if i am someone not doing content on sonic and i'm looking at it I go into a Sonic server. Somebody's already posted all the stages, all the bosses. There's already a full playthrough because it takes like three hours to get through a Sonic game, right? And then that sits for three hours and I probably feel like, well, I already saw the game. You know, I can already tell if it's good or not because it's a Sonic game. It's real easy to flip through and kind of be like, mm, okay. And I mean, mm. it's, it's a weird one, right? If it was a long game, like a 30 plus hour game, I think I'd get it. But the idea of expecting someone... <laughs> To pay twenty more dollars to get that three days early, but then offering it in the first place, I don't understand. I, I was looking to see like when the first time this happened to a game I was interested in was, and it was Forza Horizon Three in twenty sixteen, which was a twenty extra dollars to get into the game for three days early, and I just, I've I've never got it right. If it was like two or three mm -hmm. weeks for a long game, I think I'd start to be like, okay, I can start to see the value proposition there. It starts yeah. to feel insane in a different way of this game is ready and can be sold, but isn't for two extra mm -hmm. weeks, you know, but I, yeah, I think that's better. Like, I don't think there's a middle ground. I think you have Dude. to go early and be insane about it or preferably not offer it at all. In my I, I think it, you, you have to take into account that this is an MMO thing. Right. That's mm. where this comes from is from MMOs, from uh, Lord of the Rings Online, from, you know, things like that, where what they would do is they would very purposefully use FOMO right. to encourage you to get it. But you were already yeah. playing the game. You were already playing, you know, World of Warcraft. And then, oh, other people have this cool stuff. And all I'm going to do, I'm already going to buy it. I might as well give them 10 extra dollars and play it today. And that's mm. where <sighs> that comes from. It's, it, it is inherently and sort of, um, you know, uh, integrally predatory. It's designed yeah. to be that way. It's designed to to create have and have nots and encourage you to become a have for only ten dollars more, which is just the worst. It's so, such a bad system, and we're yeah. seeing it now in everything. It's showing up in every game <laughs> because people are realizing that they can get this extra ten dollars or twenty dollars or thirty dollars. Well, so that's like. That's my thing, right? Like, I feel like the way that it was, was fine. Where it was you pay full price for a game the day it comes out, and then as time passes, the price gets cheaper and cheaper, and you pay the day one tax versus, like, you know, pay, playing the, like, eh, day negative versus three not tax. paying the day. Yeah, day <laughs> negative three tax or whatever, yeah. right? Which is, like, now even more insane to just be like, okay, like, you're going to pay above the market cost of this game to play it three days before its quote unquote official release date. Well, it's like, well, what's the 
where who's that for who's this i'm for? also like from the consumer what are we end. doing here it's very individualistic right but it's like man if like your car breaks down or i don't know your power goes out right or you go, yeah. have to work overtime at work just instantly you've just kind of wasted and you get other things usually that's how they pepper it in it's like oh you get the exclusive dlc or when a season pass or something comes out you get that included right you know they'll try yeah. and do things but it's usually the main draw in this situation and i'm like it's so easy for that to just blow up on you and you not even be able to enjoy the game for those days anyway yeah and the other thing um kind of inherent but this only ever applies to digital stuff like i am getting sonic shadow <laughs> generations physically and i just don't mm-hmm. even get the option to get it three days early because yeah they make more for if you That's... buy it digitally so they want you to buy it digitally right but it Man. is like a weird like well you know you're a big enough fan to get the physical but you don't get to play it early because you wanted the physical and it just creates like a weird dissonance i think in a consumer right it's, nowadays most people buy their games digitally it's not really yeah it deal, just but. i mean it just feels we- like why can't the game start when it starts like, why can't it just launch when it's supposed to launch? It's going to get then, worse. It's going to get worse, Nico. I, I yeah, actually I am bet. very concerned about GTA 6 because I think that GTA 6 is exactly the kind of company or kind of company and kind of product that can do some really, really bad predatory things if they want to. They mm-hmm. already know, because you might recall they did a survey about a year ago seeing and t- testing the temperature of doing a $150 base price, right? And people mostly were like, I mean, it's GTA. Yeah, of course I'd pay that. Which makes me think, oh, so what if they did a $250 get it today for two weeks early access? That would be enough that people would pay for it. They would absolutely do it. And they have the power in the the market to where it wouldn't harm their sales at all. Because it would still sell like absolute bananas later at $80. And you know they (sighs) do something like, oh, and you'll get like an exclusive car in GTA Online or something, right? Like some really cool looking car or mansion or whatever the hell happens in GTA Online. I don't know. But they'll do stuff like that that people will be like, well, hell, I mean, if I'm getting all this stuff too. GTA 6, Dude, that's, man, that's the one game I'm going to play next year, you know? It's the one you know, game I'm going to play for the next decade, right? Because a lot of people a, play this game, GTA Online, nonstop. Dude, you know what I hate even more is when they have, like, either a pre-order bonus or, like, a pre-whatever bonus, whatever you're doing, you're spending extra money, you're getting this bonus, mm-hmm. and then they just make it available, like, later on. Like, you can just <laughs> buy it later. Like... Mm. My whole thing is like I pre-order like if I'm gonna pre-order the game for this thing, don't then make it available later. Is there like a because time, then why did I pre-order it? Is there a time delay where you think like eh, okay let other people have it? Because no, no. The one that comes to mind, um, you may be aware Depending. of a little game called Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation Four, and if you pre-order it, you it. got this like <laughs> iconic weapon from the second game, and mm. they never made it available until maybe like half a year ago or something eight years later is that Mm -hmm. is that in the window of no thank you or are you like okay maybe now other people? no i mean i I, yeah i guess that's fine i I guess like a few months i can see where you're coming from right Uh, yeah it was a few months so like the what i'm referring to specifically is call of duty black ops one uh because i Mm. bought the special edition so not necessarily pre-release or pre um what are we calling it? Pre early access, early access. Thank you. Not necessarily early access, but like I bought the, you know, Epic edition of the game that they were like, you know, you it's $150 and it's like, you get like, I have the physical like remote control car mm. from, you know, 10 plus more, more than that years ago for call of duty, black ops one. <laughs> um, and it came with all of the old zombies maps. Where it was like, oh, you can play all of the zombies maps from Call of Duty World at War in the Black Ops 1 engine. And Mm. I was like, oh, sick. Right. But they were like, you can only get it in this this um, special edition. So I did. I didn't even need the special edition. I didn't even want it. I just wanted the game and the zombies maps. And then a couple months later, like at the end of their DLC season, they released all of the maps Okay, like, with that together, context, I understand yeah. a lot more. That's something where yeah. it's like that needs to be in print on like the promotional image for the special edition. Like this will come out three months later or something, right? 
which I'm right. fine with. If yeah. they if they do that, they I've seen lots of it. things yeah. where it says this you know will eventually be available in game. I'm actually more a fan of those type of things where it's like you get this, but you could also go through and get it in game. You know, like I enjoy that kind of a thing where it's more of a shortcut as opposed to like a prestige thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found a, an article here, and I think it's very interesting because it. it uh, it highlights why this is so prevalent. Uh, EA, in their most recent um, quarterly, talked about the release of EA Sports College Football 25, which um, used to be the NCAA series, and uh, it hasn't been around since like 2013, right? And then they got the licenses back, and they they're you know big game. It's going to be the biggest football, blah blah blah, right? Uh, and they announced that they had. 2.2 million players pay the extra $30 for early access uh, of three oh, days. Yeah. So actually, um, this is a good time to say, uh, Chimbus in the Twitch chat, which we don't usually acknowledge, said that the DLC that I was talking about came out 10 and a half months later, which I understand, but it is, I think it wasn't advertised properly. But more importantly, oh. you can get in to our Twitch chat at twitch.tv slash crub underscore official. Find us at crub official everywhere else uh, and find us at crub.org slash join. Join our public discord. It is free. You, yes, you can be in the same group chat as all of us. Uh, oh. Patreon.com slash crub where you can get hours and hours and hours of crub content. Uh, just try it out for a month and I guarantee that you will love it. Sorry, folks. Did I miss anything? Back to the episode. So 2.2 million people paid an extra $30 uh, to, to get it, uh, which is shocking. I mean, when you think about that, right, like that's that's an extra $60 million that they were able to get. For basically that's a lot of money. No extra work on their part. Right. Just... For no extra work for an extra three days. Uh, yeah. That's, so it's that's shocking. Like the only thing it makes extra work wise is like compressing the normal amount of work into three days fewer time. But you would think that at that point the game would be done. Although I don't think we've seen a done game release in <laughs> in a while. Done enough, uh, maybe quite a long time. It. Yeah, yeah. That's a totally different discussion, of course. Right? Like we yeah, talk yeah. about it a lot here, uh, and it's actually one of my biggest peeves against uh physical right is that physical media doesn't really mean that you get the game anymore it means that you get a download key uh that's associated with a cd and there's still a day one patch and you yeah. probably can't play that game right like most of these games when they they print out their cartridges or their discs um it just it just associates the license with your your console mm -hmm. and so you have to not only do you have to keep the disc, the physical disc in because it doesn't actually just give you the Dude, right to use that game. That's but also, the worst part about it. <laughs> also, that's the it's going to download um, their day one patch and it's usually unplayable without it, especially if there's any sort of online component where you have to stay up to date. Mm. Yeah, it's no good. Dude, that's my other dude. I mean, I guess I get frustrated with updates really to anything and everything almost all the time. It'd be nice to have, for example, one website that doesn't change its user interface, like, you know, for a couple months, right? Like, it seems like every time that anything is just, yeah, this is generally agreed upon. We finally learned it. They, like, take it and they switch it up. Anyway, I digress. The point being that, like, if you're not shipping a game, at least in, like, a usable state, and then on top of that, you're asking me to like update, 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 update. Like that is just a frustrating game experience, especially for people. I have, I am very fortunate. I have very fast internet. Mm -hmm. My PS5 is hardwired in. An update doesn't really mean much to me. It doesn't take that much time. But for people with slower internet, for people who are like, you know, maybe can't afford like the high, high, high tiers of internet, like that update for them is probably at least half of their gaming time for that night. And people, that to me is not good. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I know people here in West Virginia, right. Who, you know, they have a family, they have a wife and I talked to them about new games that are coming out and they're like, yeah, you know, I had to let it download like over the weekend. And when she wasn't trying to watch like Netflix or something, right. 
And so, you know, I might get to play it tomorrow. And I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. The, the, Dude, the people so who have to, folks, <laughs> when folks have to like actually like make an active effort and carve out time for gaming, like people with families and kids and responsibilities and well, even I like mean, carve out time for gaming, but just to like have the bandwidth to download the game in the first place. So it'll like the patches. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then the thing is, the thing is, if you download that, there's a high chance that then, oh yeah, maybe I can play it this weekend. Then you get to the weekend, there's another patch. And that, <laughs> like, to me well, is just like, a pay $20 extra. Oh, yeah, yeah, to get and, the patches three days early. Yeah, and that way you're ready for the release <laughs> Actually, date. actually, that I would do if it was $20 oh, no. extra to pl- I, and I, I'm saying this as a joke. Like, I don't, I do not okay. mean this, please. Like, <laughs> I, sincerely, I don't, sincerely, I don't mean this, but like, if there were a service where it was like, okay, for this game, you pay $20 and mm. you never have to update it again. Like I would, I would do that a hundred percent of the time. Like if they let me pay $20 to get the finished game, I would do that. That does exist. At least that's called just waiting forever to play a game, I guess. Yeah. yeah having that's like, patience, yeah. right? Just waiting for right. Yeah, but no, no, not even, man. Because like, then you got like I've had games update years after like release. I do think there's one final avenue to kind of talk about. Yes, uh, with, with with the early access. Before we go on to a little bit of a chat about Gamescom, um, which is that there is already a, a propensity amongst video game developers to use their audience as unpaid beta testers how do you <laughs> feel about the fact that there is certainly an amount of uh, of early access players who are paying thirty dollars to be beta testers to just just hire beta testers for your game it's but really what, not that hard but nico like, what if you could make money and then have them test your product hmm Stonks. They pay you to test because that's what it is, right? Like I'm paying an extra thirty dollars for this game to get it three days early, and it's broken. Right, it it's, happens. I mean, it happened with um, God. There were I, I I wish I could remember. There was a game very recently in the last couple of months where the early access was just broken. It was completely broken. They ended up having to uh, uh, provide you know rewards to the people who bought the the uh, early access because it was just broken and um i don't remember exactly what it was but yeah. i do remember this story happening and, and this is somebody who ended up paying a premium to get the game early in order to beta test it and prove that it was broken yeah man like that is it's just so sad i feel like <laughs> i think there's a sad state of affairs in gaming nowadays we're like this is the situation we've arrived at a, a point where People will like companies will get people to pay them to then go in and essentially provide them that valuable, valuable, valuable player data. This isn't the one we already was referring to, but I just remembered multiverses. Multiverse. Called oh itself my God. A beta what and is- pulled itself offline for months. I think it's back now. I think they added Dude, what, Beetlejuice. But did the people who paid for that game in the beta stage like then get it for free when it came out or did they have to pay again? I think they got it. For I free. assume. Yeah, I assume they would. Well, they wouldn't have gotten it for free, right? They paid for it. They got what they paid for. Well, <laughs> right, you know I mean? right. But you yeah. never know. Like sometimes, like you it know, came the back thing into is, their library is probably the way to put it, right? Okay, because I know that they like had it up. They let people pay for it as if it was just out, and it was just there for months and months, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, by the way, it's gone. I still think oh, of is, is a real $40. master class, isn't it? Go, I'm yeah, sorry, true, Chris. true master class. I, I just think of our friend who paid forty dollars and just I don't think he tried, but just the fact that he couldn't play that game for like half a year or so just makes me laugh. Forty dollars. Well, and it it's even sadder because he really liked it. <laughs> he said at one point, <laughs> "This is better than melee." I believe was what he was on record as saying. I I put a calendar invite on my calendar for one year later after he said that. And I did follow up with him a year later and I said, Hey, do you still feel this way? And he said, yes. <laughs> so you know, I mean, $40 you know, well spent. That's yeah. sort of the thing about 
a lot of these games um, is that there's always the opportunity for this bad game to be somebody's favorite, right? Like music, there's there's somebody who that song that you heard and went, wow, that's a piece of shit, right? Like that song is somebody's favorite song. <laughs> they listen yeah. to it 20 times a day. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's just, I don't know, it's interesting that in my opinion, I guess if I had to summarize kind of my opinion of early access, I, I think it is overall negative. Um, I don't think it does any any good for anybody, right? Other than yeah. the developers. I think that it creates FOMO. I think that it, it is necessarily predatory. Uh, I, I think mm-hmm. that what you're going to see is a split in your your uh, uh, user base, right? Like you immediately have haves and have nots. And if there's any sort of progression in your game, you have people who are instantly much further along than everybody else. You can't play with your friends. You can't do whatever. And even in a single player, single player actually makes even less sense other than, right? Like if you're just paying an extra $10 to play three days early by yourself, the only people that are are getting anything out of that are the developers, very short term, because they're also going to lose all those people who go and watch the stream and don't pay for it, because they can. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's very easy to uh, avoid, but a lot of people don't seem to avoid it, and that concerns me. Yeah. But what about you guys? Any 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 other thoughts? I think (sighs) my my to summarize my feelings on early access, I will simply give it a thumbs down. Uh, and yeah, thumbs down for all the reasons outlined in the past like twenty minutes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, pretty much All right. I think we kind of hit it from every angle I think the only thing we didn't say is that I guess we could have maybe accidentally had this misconstrued as something like a Hades where it's early access as in they're actively sure. making the game and taking in feedback but not so much the three day thing but I guess that would be clear uh, well, but that's, that's, access. that goes into the paid beta test thing though true yeah, but you typically, like, with those, you typically get, like, a discount, right? So, like, if the okay. game is going to come out at $30, you're paying $20, uh, okay. and then a okay. year later it comes out at full price kind of a deal. Okay. Mm. That's, like, not the worst thing in the world. I feel like if you're going to do that, you owe these people a little bit of creative input into the game, too. They usually <laughs> do have, like, the... a forum and stuff like that. Like, you'd yeah. be surprised. There's, there's quite a lot of games that are in, in, like, Steam Early Access or Xbox Early Access or something like that, uh, mm. where those games are what they are when they come out because of all of the work uh, and thought of the players that uh, that enjoyed it and wanted to see it improve. Mm-hmm. So gotcha. certainly not talking about those. Yeah. Right. So Gamescom. Right. Yeah, yeah Gamescom, Gamescom, man. Gamescom. Em, em and I watched the first hour or so together. I didn't super catch the back half. Um, but honestly, it seemed more more hype than I thought going into it. Because I had, I was like, no one cares about any of the, all the games that they had on the little promo image, I was like, who cares? What person, who's this for? What person? You don't like um, Indiana Jones in the Great Circle? No, in fact, Boy. we put on, we put on Indiana Jones at, at our, our mutual, our group <laughs> vacation the one time, and everybody like fell asleep or got disinterested within the first half an hour. So like, it's a big open room. There's like a living room area and a kitchen area. Slowly, everyone just naturally migrated into the kitchen. And I remember yep. just sitting there like, I've never seen these. I guess I want to watch this. I looked around and no one was there. It's like, I guess I'm going to go to the kitchen and hang out. Now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Poor I was legitimately, I was because we all, all of us were like, oh yeah, we haven't seen this. Let's throw it. It's a classic. Let's throw it on. And then it was, and then we just did not care. Yeah. And uh, that's how I feel about the Indiana Jones game. That's how I feel about the Marvel game. You guys told me to, you guys uh, mentioned the Marvel, uh, what oh, Marvel it, Rivals? Rivals? Rivals hit game. The trailer hit that beta? just had the, the guy doing four moves in a row. I thought that was kind of lame. It is a Concord um, like, though. Concord like, man. It's con- hit game Concord. I, I, I want to stay on the Indiana Jones thing for a minute because. Yeah. 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 Uh, Indiana Jones, that trailer was one of the weirdest trailers I've seen in a long time. It had uh, Troy Baker, who is the voice actor, being an influencer for the game and, and saying, this is one of the best first player. And it's like, but you're not involved in the game. Like, I, I love I, I appreciate voice actors to death. But let's be clear that there is a, a, a distinct difference between what a voice actor is doing 
and what like a game designer is doing in terms of how well you can talk about what that game is going to be like you as a voice actor may never have seen the game ever literally yeah. never yeah <laughs> like no literally like the game seems cool but i don't understand this trailer because it started up this is the penultimate trailer for this like two hour thing and it starts off like i'm troy baker and i you know, ever since i was a kid i didn't know jones i was like all right cool once it's going to switch to like the director the developer um the yes. art director or something right like are we really gonna yeah, we're going to go through this and really work through bringing Indiana Jones to like a modern video game. And no, it was just Troy Baker the whole time. I was like, well, it was yeah. so okay. weird. It felt like a YouTube so, featurette so and not a game conference trailer. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, I also, you, you know, you mentioned seeing the same move multiple times. <laughs> I saw times. him. <laughs> I saw him punch <laughs> counter punch. The, the the same move I think three or four times. Yeah. Uh if you're doing a trailer, right, like I get that you you only have so much animation that you can show, but maybe just don't show the same thing so yeah. many times in your thirty second, you know, little ad. Yeah. Wild choices. Um I I'm not disinterested in it. You know, I, I like machine games. I think they've done some really cool stuff with the Wolfenstein games. Um I'm willing to give it a shot on Game Pass. <laughs> yeah. Because I tell well, you, it doesn't look like a purchasing kind of game. And we talked about Black Ops 6 on Game Pass, too, because I was I was like, yeah, probably won't buy Black Ops 6 because I, I haven't, like... They, they kind of killed the zombies community. Like, they ended the story that everyone cares about, and now they're on, like, a new story that's tangential, so, like, there's mm -hmm. no reason for me to play it. But the campaign, like, they brought back the campaign, and Em and I were like, yeah, we'd probably play this on Game Pass. I'm playing on Game Pass. Yeah, yeah I, I thought that the yeah. Black Ops 6, you know, like, it looks really good, but all yeah. Call of Duties do look really good. Yeah. Um, it, it's so, so it takes place in 1991, and it sort of takes oh, yeah. place after oh, the Cold War that. game. Right, so you see some of the same characters who are in Cold War show up, which I thought was very interesting because Cold War was pretty universally hated. Mm. Um, but they yeah. decided to not only make kind of like a direct sequel to it, but keep several of the same characters in it, and then place it in 1991, which is you know ten years before <laughs> most of the people who were playing it were even alive. And then um, used and then used like 2035 technology. Yeah, and then they have like. <laughs> homing knives <laughs> and and taser grenades and all sorts of stuff and it's like i i just don't understand what kind of tone you guys were going for here like, i won't lie it was I, most, so funny most of that trailer i tuned out but i do remember the guy was like crawling away on the floor or something backwards and he pulled out a remote control car thing yeah, yeah that's the one that's the one that i have the physical one from black ops one and he just drives it into this heavily armored guy and it explodes and everyone's like, oh yeah, that was all right, good job, let's keep going. And I was just like, what, what is the tone of this well, game? I don't understand. Dude, so then, I can't tell. But so then, so then, right, they like, they get onto the motorcycles, right, and they're right. indoors. Now look, I'm going to describe this, and for the listeners, this is going to sound awesome. This is going to sound like the best thing that you've heard of action wise in a while. Mm -hmm. But I just, I can't see it playing. But like, then we remembered it was 1991. So basically they're on the motorcycles. They are indoors. They start revving them up. They have the guy from cold war, like put on his sunglasses and like say, Oh, quip one liner. <laughs> and then they just start <laughs> Michael baying you out, like through several <sighs> sets of doors. For the spectacle, there's like, and so this is the problem. When they get outside mm -hmm. to do the like Michael Bay sequences, there's already people there. To there's fight already them. there's <laughs> already enemies there for them. There's already yep. enemies there waiting for them. And we were like, why? We we're like, yep. who told them that they were there? Like they're already in cars too, ready to chase you. And it's like, yeah, I, I don't and, know about that one. Was, were they just sitting there like they're gonna come out any second now? Like, and this was gameplay. Like this is almost certainly the first like hour of the game mm. like yeah, this yeah, is yeah, like, like kind of verbatim mission. yeah right and it like i don't know i mean it looked awesome it I looked love, like I, you know sorry, yeah, sorry i just Chris. i just love that one liner you mentioned because they like rescue yeah. some guy or whatever the hell happens and it's like you ready to go and he puts on his sunglasses in a very dark 
barely lit room. It's like, now I am. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, so funny. Were, I think I think Michael Bay should direct a Call of Duty game. Sorry. I mean, that's where this came from, <laughs> yeah. right? So Call of Duty, the very first Call of Duty, well, it was Medal of Honor, I'm sorry. The very first Medal of Honor was Steven Spielberg. That makes sense. Right? Well, that's Spielberg, where, Spielberg, but he's not Michael Bay. Like that's sure. di- that's sure. very different. Like I'm saying, Michael Bay. Like we I get need, it. Like yeah. yeah. There it's, were a couple you know, of uh, of other things that I saw that I thought yeah. were really interesting. Um, I thought the Goat Simulator remaster ad was one of the best ads I've ever seen. That was a very good ad. Game. <laughs> yeah, it looked it a was, lot like uh, Cabin in the Woods for games. Yes, so it was yeah. it was like all of the memes from various video games and like glitches and stuff hidden as the monsters underground in a cabin in the woods underground prison i thought it was just so good yeah. and then you see the 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 magneto you know thing at the end and the lights come up and then the the, the goat is just standing there i love what they do with it um i think it's really fantastic i don't play the games to be clear yeah i'm no. not like a fan of the games or anything but what a crazy fun trailer uh it, it really sets the mood for everything uh, I, I enjoyed that a whole I, lot. I am just question what type of game Goat Simulator. Have, have either of you played Goat Simulator? Yeah, it's it's boy, uh, I I can't name a game you would know, but it's it's sort of right randomness. Okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Wall, like 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 Roar XD type of tone. Kind of, you are a goat in the world, and you know there's things you can achieve um, right. by licking. And the headbutting. Dude, dude it was just the like the photorealistic render of a human man in the uh in the good <laughs> simulator trailer where I was like, was, What uh, is this game? It's, like, what it's do you very do? wacky. It's hard yeah. to explain. You really need to just kind yeah, of try it, try it yourself. It's very yeah. strange. Was that supposed to be the Connor guy from Detroit Become Human, or did it just happen to look almost exactly like I think like it just kind of looked like him. Okay. Yeah. But but I, I suspect that if we were to go through it, like, kind of on a frame-by-frame frame thing, we would mm-hmm. find so many different Easter eggs and memes in there, because that's yeah. very much, you know, goat simulator, what they yeah. do. There yeah. was a lot um, of care, a lot of care put into that. An- another one that I thought was a, a very interesting trailer was <laughs> Starfield's Rev 8 trailer. Oh, no. What? This is the weirdest trailer I've ever ever seen it is so tonally dissonant it is so confusing it is very very weird this is the one where they focused on the car and made it we're going into space and the car is floating around and racing on on different planets and like doing jumps and stuff it was so strange and then all of a sudden combat being shot at and then immediately after that horror noises oh it's terrifying it was so like <sighs> tonally dissonant <laughs> i uh, i missed the start of it and i almost for a second thought it was um was it gran turismo 6 that lets you go on a moon rover on the moon or something at some point i thought it was a racing game <laughs> yeah i was like this must be a gt7 thing or some racing game right and then all that happens and i was yeah, and then you see the combat, and you're like, what is this? And there was a moment in my head where I was like, this looks like Starfield, but it can't be, right? Mm. This can't. This has got to be something weird. What is this? One of the strangest ads I've ever seen. I can't imagine anybody who would see that and be like, I've got to get Starfield now. <laughs> it was just yeah. so bizarre. I'd put it off this yeah. long, but that sold me. So bizarre. Yeah. Um, weird one. Reanimal. By uh, by Tarsier Studios, which is the people who did uh, Little Nightmares and Little Nightmares Two. Right. Um, that so one of the things that I found, and this is my my conspiracy theory, because they showed Little Nightmares Three later on, right? And Little Nightmares Three also had two player characters and a bunch of bug enemies, and I suspect that at some point Tarsier was working on this and left to go make their own game, mm-hmm. which is this Reanimal game, there were too many similarities between Reanimal and Little Nightmares 3. It looked so similar. Like Reanimal, to by the way, style. the coolest, most horrific character designs I've seen. Right? Looks like sick. The, Looks the sick. Little Nightmare 3 ones are not nearly as cool. Uh, the, the, the ones in Reanimal are terrifying. That creepy goat 
Oh yeah. my goodness, is that goat creepy? That is yep. the creepiest goat I've seen in a long time. Very, <laughs> very cool. Uh, uh, I, I'm super curious, though. Like, I'd really like to know the background of what went on there, because their games are too similar for there not to have been like, you know what? Screw you, Bob. I'm going to go make my own game. <laughs> yeah. And then he did. And then, and then release it, uh, the, uh, announce it the same day, just for clout. Same day. Yeah, <laughs> just for clout. Dude, <laughs> Path of Exile 2 actually looks really fun. Looks like, so I'm, sick. I was saying to M earlier, I've never played like an isometric, uh, like sort of beat em up hack and slash type of game, PvE. Would technically be an ARPG, action RPG. Yes, I've never played one like that, and I had always been interested in trying to pick one up, and I think Path of Exile 2 might be the one. Interesting. It's, uh, so, it's coming out in November. It's going to be free. Yeah. And um, or maybe it was October, and it's going to be free because Path to Exile Grinding Gears is free. It's owned by Tencent. That's just what they do. Uh. And um, you know they they sell cosmetics that are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Path of Exile One is one of the most big games. It's really right. hard to like. It's huge. This game is is probably. If you wanted to complete everything, I think you're looking at thousands of hours, right? Mm -hmm. Like, actually thousands. Um, the average game play of, like, somebody who likes the game is going to be in the hundreds of hours, and they still will not have touched even in, you know, a, a, a sizable portion of it. It's massive. Um, it's famous because of its skill tree, which is, like... 3,000 oh. skills? Yes, we mm -hmm. talked about it the other week. I remember now, yes. Yeah, uh, Path of Exile is cool. It's a very cool game. It's mm. uh, uh, one of the few games I've ever played where you can make a character that's truly unique. Like, truly mm -hmm. unique. You won't. You won't, because you'll look at that skill tree and you'll be like, no, no, I'm going to go find a, a, a guide. This is insane. Right. But yeah. you can. You can make a, a character that is completely never before seen. And that's neat. It's very yeah. cool. I really like that. I did look over at one point. Sorry, shifting a little bit. I looked over and I saw the Squid Games game. Oh, from up. Netflix. It's a mobile game? Ugh. I don't know what to think about that. It's I Fall was... Guys with Squid Games character skins oh. on mobile. I was just like, who is this for? Uh, you know, like, because the thing is, I mean, I guess Squid Game... Didn't the season two trailer just like drop recently or something I like that? I think season two is coming out soon. And then you've also got, um, um, you know, Mr. Beast Squid Games thing that destroyed mm -hmm. the internet. And yeah. Squid Games is there, right? Like they, they yeah. did their spin off show, and the, the show still shows up occasionally on the top yeah. 10, whatever. Mm. I mean, the show was all right. It was a good show. Like, I'm probably going to watch I, the I second it. season. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I don't know that it's like, I thought it was good. I don't think its bigness is proportional to how good it is. I don't know if that makes sense. I think I, that I makes think sense. It's, I think it's too popular for what it is. It was mm. very, very popular. Um, I think portion of that is that people hadn't really experienced Korean drama uh, yet, right? Like yeah. Korean, Korean television, man, I love it. I think it's some of the best out there. They're making some really innovative stuff. Uh, if you go on to Netflix and watch, like, you know, Korean movies, boy, they are wildly ahead of everything we're doing in Hollywood right now. It's really, really impressive. And um, Squid Games was good. It was a little bit, I don't want to say tropey, but like you knew what was happening. There were cliches there, right? Yeah. Like, it but wasn't like, at the point where it was fully blase, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean? right. Like the, the, the tropes to me, like, and, and just conventions, like don't super matter to me. But, like, just the, I mean, for what it is, right? Like, yeah, it, I don't know. I think it's too big for, for what they did with that story. It's too certainly too big to, to, it's certainly, absolutely, it's way too popular for a mobile game. Yeah. It's way too popular game. for that. Oh, um, wow. What about Peter Molyneux showing up? <laughs> they let him out of the uh, dungeon. To, <laughs> to talk about Masters of Albion. Uh, boy, this, okay, so there's basically nobody else that you could bring up other than Peter Molyneux that is going to get a worse response from me, right? Peter Molyneux, um, is a scam artist, in my opinion. 
uh, Godot was a scam. The square thing, what's in the center of the square or whatever, the cube, whatever, that was oh, a right. scam. Uh, <laughs> every game he's done in the last several years, everything from 22 cans was a scam. Every single one of them was a scam. I don't think he should be a lot. Like, in a perfect world, he would have been sued. For Nico and people <laughs> who aren't as familiar, because he hasn't been around for a, a while in yeah, such a I, way. That's what's a new like name the, for me. What's like Fable? To convey, like, uh, the issue with P Peter Molyneux, is there, like, a single, easily yeah, like a digested... Because, like, when fable. I think of him... In Fable, you're going to be able to plant, plant a, a, tree. A, 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 a seed, and, you'll and watch then you're going to come back, and it will be a tree. You will plant a seed in this Xbox game, you'll go off and play the game and come back, and there will be a tree there, and it's like, oh, that sounds... Cool, useless, but cool. The whole world, you'll be able to do whatever you want. If you save somebody, they can grow up and, and own houses. You'll be able to come back, and and the whole world will change because of your actions, Nico. You, you alone, so, you will go out there. You will be scam, the hero, though. You because no. it didn't do any of that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, I see. You play the game and like burp at someone and be like, well, this is kind of cool, but where's all the stuff you talked about? It's like, it doesn't do any uh, of that. Right, right. Okay, yes, I every see. Every game, he has it multiple, progressively got worse. Multiple interviews mm -hmm. out there being like, well, I guess I might have overpromised a bit too much with that. I'm sorry. And then he just comes and does it again. And it just keeps yeah. happening. Okay, Fable okay. 2. This time okay. in Fable 2, you're going to be able to plant that tree. I know we said we could do it before, but, you know, the technology is finally here. We're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to make it a thing. And then it doesn't happen. And as uh, in our chat in, in Twitch just right now, Project Milo. Project Milo was faked. It was faked. It was supposed to be a connect game where you could talk to a virtual creation. Think sort of like the girlfriend apps that people have on their phones now where you can like talk oh, to your girlfriend. <laughs> Only it was supposed to be like a seven year old child, right? So you oh. could talk to Milo and he would play games with you and you could throw balls and whatever. And none of it was completely faked. It was not even like vertical sliced fake. It was literally fake. It didn't exist, and they were showing it to people, uh, uh, highly scripted, completely fake. He is a scam artist. And then he went on to do 22 Cans, where he puts out a game called Godot. Absolute scam. Literal, literal scam. He took money from people for, for from Kickstarter, and, and I don't know, bought fucking blow. Like, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a scam. He's a scam! Ah, uh, I was yeah. just no, amazed I, I to see, see him. In an on-stage capacity at a major event in twenty, the trail he was going to do that, and 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 uh, um, the the curiosity, what's in the cube, and then he's taking goddess and turning it into into goddess wars, and and this is a scam artist. Everything he does is a scam, and I don't know what he's doing here. And then they shows this Masters of Albion, right, where he's like, it's a god game, just like black and white, and you'll be able to go ahead and pick things and you can customize every building and you can make all of their food and all of their clothing you can customize everything they have you oh you can make a bread sword if you wanted to and then they showed the just absolute worst looking combat i've ever seen in a game i want to explain the um the cube <laughs> thing for nico they released an app kind of a game kind of an app it was a willy wonka-esque like tap away at the cube everyone gets like a tap a day or something basically right whatever like you can't just sit there and tap at it like everyone has to take time and basically someone gets to the center and that's one lucky person and they get an unspecified reward someone gets it and it's I, what is it and like the ability to make a major decision in the design of like his get, next game or to, something yeah so what it was was you get to control the weather in goddess and and you'll get a portion of the sales. Yes. And the game never came out. <laughs> game never came out because it's a scam. Scam. That sounds like a scam. It's very yeah, funny. That is like he's just a scam artist. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Anyways, Peter well, Molyneux showed up. Yeah, he was there like, for some reason. <laughs> and shows just the, the worst game. It looked really bad. That was the thing with it the narration. Like really you were bad. impersonating him and making it sound exciting. But when you go watch the video, he's like rolled out of bed like oh in the next game you'll be able to do all this in albion it's like 
sound excited or get <laughs> someone else to do it. So oh, bad. Oh man, Chris, that's so got to be your next character for um for uh if we ever do baggage again. Oh, just you just did Peter that. Molyneux. <laughs> you just, yeah, dude, Peter Molly old. Like <laughs> and just like yeah. yeah, so I'm talking about video games today. We're going to be talking about a game where you can do anything you like. Well, that's you can thing. even every, round to train. Every time anybody says anything, you need to be like, you could do it better. You can yeah, even I, I really like the train. song. You'll be able to change the song. You'll be able to customize the You'll song. You'll be able to make the song your own. You'll um, be able to get a slice, <laughs> of, slice of the profits. Uh, Speaking of games yes. from weird people, um, any hype for Borderlands 4 from you guys? Uh, there's nothing. No, they no. need to show us yeah. something. I think well, that they they put this together okay. um, the same over face. the past week. I think yes. this is this Have was the thing where it was like we Have need to, to put it together today. Because uh, my, my question is because the movie, yeah, is the is the game, and and I know you guys don't know the answer to this, but is the game gonna be photorealistic? No, because so that's there, what the trailer it indicated. It was interesting. The uh, the logo for the very first time, and I'm a huge Borderlands guy. I've played all of them for hundreds of hours, way too long. Um, Borderlands, <laughs> I everything. did not know that about you. All the Tiny <laughs> Tinas, every DLC, I've played them all, right? I love Borderlands. Um, what was interesting is that the logo for the Borderlands 4 did not have any cell shading. Uh, which yeah, they've well, all neither had the, cell shading before, so they I don't know. brought up the mask, and it wasn't. It was, it was photorealistic. Well, I mean, that was a, a video, right? Like, I accept that that one might not be, um, you know, in-game, but mm. the logo wasn't cell shaded, and it's always been cell shaded. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sort of curious. It, it sort of felt like it was hyper 3D when they showed the, the, the logo. So I don't know if they're doing something different or if it was just, you know, whatever trash Randy <laughs> could get out the door as fast as possible. I mean, maybe it's um, his, his noted friend, Kevin Hart. Oh, uh, funny, is executive right? producing. Maybe Do you think maybe they're going in a more realistic direction because they're like, That's Oh, maybe the movie will go like. well. I don't know. I really don't. I mean, like. um, the movie, right. Was such a huge failure. It's the biggest flop. Uh, of the year, I think, and it's Probably. one of the biggest flops of video game history because you got to remember that it cost 130 million dollars before marketing. And uh, that means that it probably cost, you know, two hundred million dollars, and then it made eight million dollars. <laughs> mm, pretty bad. Um, not including, of course, the international pre-sales that they did, which amounted to like eighty-five million dollars. Which, thank God for that company, they managed to do it because, uh, boy, that that movie is going. That's dead. It's dead. It's already coming to streaming. It's already coming to streaming. It's been out for a week and a half, and they already announced it's coming to streaming. Oh, uh, boy. Boy. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so wow. we'll, we'll see about Borderlands. How we'll that goes. see. Yeah, uh, we'll it, see about Borderlands. I, it's interesting to me because they may actually do something different, and they haven't done anything different <laughs> since Borderlands 2. Uh, it'd be very interesting. Yeah. Um, thankfully, yeah. they didn't show off any of their, their stellar writing, because, uh, <laughs> boy, they... <laughs> what a good timing for it, though. All the movie fans yeah. would be like, oh, it's just like the movie. It's just it like did, the movie. It did yeah. feel like a bit of a self-serious trailer for Borderlands, which was like totally yeah. not what I'm used to from no. that. But from this that is the camp. thing. This is why I feel like it was something where after the movie bombed, uh, they were like, we need to promote Borderlands 4. I know that we don't have anything to show, but we just need something and it needs to look good. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it, it wasn't cartoony. I think that's why it wasn't uh, jokey. There was no dialogue because there's no dialogue. Right. I think it was literally just get something out so that mm -hmm. we can turn the story away from Borderlands being the biggest flop and, right. and bring it back. Because you got to remember that Borderlands is what makes Gearbox. It is the only property they have that makes yeah. money. Um, it's the only property they have that, that people like. Right, because like people don't like aliens, colonial marines, right? No. Yeah, well, people, people out there, people don't like that because that. it's it's bugged, as far as I it's know. It's all bad. You got to understand, every yeah. game they've ever made, other than Borderlands, has been actively bad. Right? Valid, valid. Like, what was the game they made that uh, turns out it's just Valve's Deadlock now? Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, I can't remember. But it was the MOBA first-person shooter, but it was the third-person shooter. Battleborn. So, like, <laughs> you know, like, the, the, they've they failed at everything. They're a, a failure of a company uh, that just happened to make 
Borderlands, right? And you got to remember that they came from Valve. They were they were a company that made Valve uh, Half Life spinoffs. They made Blue Shift. They made Op Four, two very good games. But they needed somebody there on top of them to make the games good because not mechanically that they're bad. Right? They make right. good mechanical games. It's that they always add in Randy Pitchford's stupid humor. <laughs> Randy, and he's Randy an idiot. He, he has the worst, absolute worst sense of humor out there. He, he just likes to talk about poo all day long. And, like, that's cool that you like that, bro, but that can't be what all of your games are about. And that's all of their games is too mm. much. It's too I mean, much. he's friends. He's friends with Kevin Hart, so he's got to. No, he's be not friends with Kevin Hart. Kevin friends. Hart didn't even shake his hand. If you remember, yeah, no, but they, but there's, oh, there's that picture that always goes around of the two of them being be friends of Randy dunking on Kevin Hart. They're best friends. Mm. They love each other. <laughs> yeah, they're best friends. Um, there were oh, uh, there were three other things I want to talk about, not because they're super interesting. One is interesting, but two yeah. were interesting to me. Uh, Journey to the Savage Planet's sequel, um, Revenge of the Savage Planet. I'm very excited for it's a fps metroidvania uh -huh. and it's a co-op fps metroidvania with kind of this goofy do you remember high on life the uh the game that was oh. created by the guy who uh, rick and morty man. justin roiland yeah yeah it was created by justin right Roiland. right and um that kind of vibe right like picture that vibe but like without kind of the again the randy type of humor in there and uh you get kind of the the aesthetic look of Savage Planet, yeah. and um, if you take that and then make it a Metroidvania with platforming, it was very cool. It was super neat. I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it's a good like co-op game to play with somebody that you just want to chat to because it's very low impact, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's not a lot of combat. Uh, it's not like the puzzles are super hard. They just tend to be like endurancey. You just got to do it right and it's the type of thing where you can be playing with somebody for a couple hours and really enjoy yourself i, I like that a lot mm -hmm. um civilization 7 yeah. looks gorgeous absolutely if i had gorgeous. friends if i had friends i'd i'd play that game <laughs> if i had Civ friends you can play <laughs> Civ by friends. yourself yeah, but why would i that's not that's what no. most people do. Uh, That's not. I wouldn't. So I don't long. Wanna, I'm not interested. When you play multiplayer Civ, like turns turn into like hour long things, yeah, uh, which is actually like... my concern with this game. To be clear, I am concerned about the late game uh, because they showed a lot of wonders and they showed close up wonders and they showed a whole lot of. A uh, unit on unit battle, and they all seem to have rocks and slings and stuff. There were there were a couple of things later on, but they mm. they really really need to address at this point, and it's something they've needed to do address since Civ Four, and they didn't address it in Five or Six, and I doubt they're going to address it in Seven. Is uh, late game turn length right? They need to flatten out the experience because early in the game you are talking about you know seconds for a turn, and late in the game you're talking about thirty minutes, right? Like it is a thirty minute turn. I see. Uh, it's too long. I did not know it's that. It's too about much into yeah. micromanagement. Yeah. I was sitting no, here like, oh, maybe I'll ask what like a good entry point is, but hearing that, I'm like, uh, maybe not. Yeah, no. It gets real yeah. like it's fun. It's if there's one on uh, on like a Game Pass or something, or, or like a PlayStation or whatever, try it out because it's a good game. Mm. Um, Civ Rev is probably my favorite, honestly, because it's super super low. Uh, there, there's not a whole lot of like dealing with all the. Re I'm sorry, Revolution Civilization yeah, yeah. Revolution. Um, there's not a whole lot of like the micromanagey stuff, and the the turns do end up kind of keeping short throughout. Right. Uh, but when you're playing Civ Six, right? It, we're talking even on quick. We're not talking about marathon here. Even on quick, a turn is going to be twenty or thirty minutes in in the late game, and it's just too long. It's a long yeah. time to sit there and 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 be constantly clicking yeah. over, click, 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 click. I mean, and that's... God help you if you're in war in the late stages. It just <laughs> takes hey, forever. There's there's a reason that like you know. I've been playing Magic the Gathering a lot, and there's a reason that we don't play with five people in a commander game. Like, we only play four max because it just takes way too long. Like, actually, it's the inverse issue. It takes way too long between your turn. Like, so the between when you are making an input and then yeah. the next time you have to make an input, when you add that extra person, it just adds so much more time. Yeah. And I feel like waiting 30 minutes for one person to do a turn is super egregious and perhaps not habitable for the average 
person. Thankfully, with either five or six, they uh, uh, did concurrent terms, so you you can okay. play at the same time. But it doesn't That's matter. Good. There's still going to be turns where you're sitting here going, "I've been done for a while. How long for you? Well, I'm still doing my thing." And okay, all right, so it's going to be yeah. a while. Let's yeah. get too into the weeds. Does it have a mode where you can kind of just? Make your turn and close the game, and then the other person makes their turn, and then you get back to it. Oh, whenever yeah. So, you can. so you I guess it would be like a something. play by email or something like yeah, that's that. That's exactly right? what I was like, thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, That'd be super so cool. I think they do have a play by email, but I don't recall. I haven't okay. played their multiplayer in a little bit, but I know that they did tend to kind of go along those type of things. But you're still talking about very long term games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, a Civ game, if somebody ever invites you to play, hey, do you want to play a co op Civ? They are asking you if you want to give up the next several weeks of your life. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a big ask. Yeah. I've, um, I've played Civ Five once or twice with people. And uh, so first of all, I didn't realize how far into like the future Civ goes because we were just stuck so far in the past. And then mm. we played it two, three times and then just never picked our game back up because it was just like... Yeah, what are you we start doing? With, <laughs> you know? with cavemen, and then you end with giant death robots. Yeah, um, it's it's you got to play it like D and D. I feel like if you're gonna play it, it's got to be like session. a risk a risk yeah. party group. You know, it is. I'm gonna tell you, Chris. Here's the fun. This is a fun thing about Civ. Uh -huh. It is faster to play the board game. Oh, that makes sense. Actually, that makes a it's ton of sense. Actually, yeah. faster to play the board game. Mm. Yeah, that's wild, isn't it? <laughs> I see. Okay, man. Yeah. yeah. Just and then I guess the, the very last thing that I super wanted to talk about, yeah. um, and then you know we'll see if if uh, you guys have anything else. Secret level, yes, the uh, anthology animated series from the Lev Death and Robots creator. This show looks kind of incredible, actually. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm super excited. Let's see what's it called? Secret level. Okay. Secret level. That yeah. uh, looks really really good, and um, they chose to to. <laughs> well, there's some games on, on the list of 15 games that they're going to talk about that maybe don't belong here, but <laughs> it looks really, really good. And yeah. uh, it's basically um, Love, Death, and Robots, but video games. And there's going to be 15 episodes where each episode focuses on a different video game. And I'm just going to read real quick the video games that they're going to do because I, I think they're really fascinating. There's going to be Armored Core, Crossfire, Dungeons & Dragons, Exodus... Honor of Kings, Mega Man, New World, uh, specifically the Eternum one, the new, the new uh, 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 update. Pac Man, Sifu, Spelunky, The Outer Worlds, Unreal Tournament, Warhammer 40K, and then two special ones: Concord, Concord, yeah, yeah, Free Gunners, baby, <laughs> PlayStation, which um, for some reason those are. Combined into an episode. They should be combined. Uh, but I think the fact that you see PlayStation there is why you also see Concord there. They were really hoping that Concord would be the big next thing. And uh, obviously not they were not willing. Not that price point. <laughs> they were obviously yeah, willing to uh, to fund an extra episode of this show <laughs> to just talk about Concord. Is, uh, is it like, is it just a bunch of documentaries or is it no, like. No, 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 no. It's, it's like little animated. Uh, uh, oh, stories like yet. told yeah. over like 15 to 30 minutes in the world. Pretty so cool. when they do an Armored Core one, it's going to be about the world of Armored Core, oh. the characters of Armored Core. Yes, okay, that's sick. That's Nico, sick. Yes. There was an episode with Kratos in a city. Or at least Yo. a part of Kratos. So there's some God of Let's War go. stuff, if that piques your interest. I think the Armored Core piques my interest. I'm probably not going to watch like the ones for the games that I don't really care about, because like, I don't Sifu feels like an odd man out here for me. I feel like that was like a nothing game that like no one really talks about ever. I think so, it like, won indie game of the year that year. People um, like it. I think it's yeah, a really interesting liked it. game list but, all in all. Like I feel like it covers a lot of different and yeah. Good it things. feels like it's. It feels Honestly, like there's the, something the, the for everybody here. Is, there's a couple on here I feel that are, are kind of out of Concord's clearly out right. Like, yeah. That that one That's is. Oh, one. but we're so watching pager. it. But we're it's so watching it though. We're so watching it. Crossfire makes sense because it's the biggest game in the world. A lot of people forget that Crossfire is the biggest game in the world. It's the biggest game in the world. Mm. Uh, Dungeon of the Dragons, yeah, of course. It's yeah. Dungeon of the Dragons. Makes sense. Exodus, uh, maybe. Honor of Kings is a weird one. 
Yeah. Honor Kings is ten cents um, biggest. Like this is the most profitable game uh, I think in the world. It makes uh, ten cent something like five or eight billion dollars a year. It's crazy how much money Honor Kings brings in. It's a MOBA. It's just a MOBA clone. Oh, this is a MOBA, right? Like it's a lot not more even than ten cents. <laughs> yes, it's more than ten cents. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> so it's interesting to see it here because it's like I feel like they chose this uh, because it's the biggest game, not necessarily because it has anything to talk about. Yeah. But then I think about um, you know League of Legends uh, TV show Arcane and how they were able to create you know characterization for characters that had none right yeah. like they had none they're they're, they're nothing they're voice lines so yeah. maybe honor of kings is able to do that too but for now that is one of the ones that i am curious about like negatively yeah you know? yeah, I know what you mean. like mm-hmm. curious negative yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> um, yeah 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 mega man could be one of the best things to see like that could be incredible if the, i i guarantee it's going to be fun yeah and maybe it could be the best Sonic movie we've ever gotten. Uh, if you you get what I mean from that, like it could be that fun, lighthearted kind of thing. I'm very excited for the Mega Man. Mm. Uh, New World Eternum is a weird choice, but I guess Amazon does have a lot of money, <laughs> yeah. and this is an Amazon game. And I think Secret Level is going to be on Amazon, so right, it, it makes is. sense. Yeah. Them, yeah, right. That would explain like, that. It makes sense why they would be like, "You're also going to do one about New World, our game that we keep putting a lot of money into." <laughs> that um, one. Yeah. New World is a weird game for me because I think it's really, really fun for about ten hours. It is such a good time for about ten hours, and then I get this really hard drop off where it's like, "Oh, this is what I'm doing forever in this game," and yeah. and that just kind of kills it for me and the thing is i think anybody who picked up new world it's free it's free to play game you can go play it right now i think that you get 10 hours and then all of a sudden either you are the biggest fan or you're just like i i'm doing this for how long okay i'm done now because it doesn't change there's no change the Mm -hmm. the vibe is the same at level one as it is at level 100 okay and one of the coolest things they did in this game uh just because i think it's interesting yeah. the entire ecosystem or not eco- uh, the the entire um economy is player driven the entire economy is player there are no go sell things to a merchant there are no oh. go buy things from a merchant it is 100 percent through their uh, auction oh, so house you sell every to single thing you do to, like other from players one person. That wow weird. that's that's kind of a weird choice it's kind of yeah. Wow, I like. I feel like that's at least unique, and like, there's a couple other see. games who've tried to do that, but New World definitely is like the one that that I can think of that did it the most successfully. Because obviously, the biggest problem with the player driven economy is scarcity, right? Uh, everybody needs that thing, so I'm not going to sell it. I need it too, mm-hmm. um, and then it becomes very, very expensive, and it typically becomes the type of thing where you need to go out and just get it yourself, right? Like yeah. it's not worth yeah. it to to do whatever. But New World is large enough that they were able to to kind of get past that. Uh, the problem, of course, being that because it's large and you need a large population to run the server, or else the economy dies. It is the most lag filled just garbage when you're in a city it's almost unplayably laggy in the city it's wild mm-hmm. interesting interesting yeah i'm uh, i'm excited right. for the show it's nice to see it's just kind of appealing for it to have to have a limit right it's not like oh this needs to maybe set up seasons right like we've talked about the, yes. the yakuza series and then immediately it becomes like gee i wonder how they're going to handle two and three and five and eight mm-hmm. I, I like the idea of them having to kind of be like okay we're telling this story in this specific time frame and that's it yeah right maybe like, we'll do another one like, in like a season two but for now it's this yeah and that's very appealing right. self-contained um, one-to-one like you just watch it you get it done yeah. it's we're here we're well, in not, not, we're out not just that right like, it gives you a lot more freedom Right. And yeah. that's one of the things that I like about it is that you could kill that character and it's fine. Right. Like you may not want to, but you can. Yeah. And yeah. if you do, it affects nothing. It's not canon. It's just a story. And you can see these things and kind of enjoy it. You know, yeah. they're doing a thing on Spelunky and uh, 
Spelunky could, the, the guy could get trapped yeah. inside. He should, in fact, get trapped. It's a game about dying a lot. It would make sense for him to die, but if you're doing a movie, right? Oh, well, season 12, you can't, you can't have him dead. <laughs> um, yep. Sifu, naturally, he's going to get older, right? Like, that's the whole thing about Sifu is that he has to get older and then die, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, then you're kind of missing out on on the, the core thing of it. Uh, Warhammer, they're doing a, a Warhammer 40K thing. Uh, if that character, if the show, that episode doesn't end with the character surrounded and about to be taken out, yeah. right, in a horde, then it's not really a great Warhammer story. A great Warhammer story, no, that hero's about to go down, and he's going to tell a goddamn story when he's, you know, it's, it's going to be something that people want to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I'm very excited for that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, Unreal Tournament, how do you do, how, how do you do, do one of the original arena shooters <laughs> without like, shooting people, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm excited about this. That to me. Like, it yeah. seemed cool at first, but like, the more I've sat and thought about it in a few hours since this has happened, right? I just kind of get more excited about it. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't turn I mean, out I, well, I think, but it's interesting. I think Keanu relative... Reeves is going to be a part of it as well, so that's always fun. Oh, Shadow the Hedgehog. I think rel- relative to what we've spoken about on the pod in the past and in the pre-show today, mm-hmm. um, the uh, talking about the ILM, you know, the volume, which is their, like, digital set for people who don't know, yeah. um, taking sort of the soul out of some things. Um, I love when we have properties like this anthologies, what have you that allow people to put the soul back into something. It's super, super good to see. And I, and I I think, you know, as long as Amazon lets them do it, which it seems like they generally do fingers crossed. I'm, I'm optimistic. Aside from so let's that. go on to our Patreon question of the week. Yeah, yes, I was going to say, sir, I was looking at everything right else on. I got here, and it's like uh, Monument Valley three. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a two, so it's it's that yeah. tier kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. There were a lot of games. I, I know I kept uh, notes of the whole thing on my Discord. I yeah. wrote them all down because I know most people don't like to watch these things, and I'm sure you guys did the same. Uh, so if you want to see any specific takes. Uh, I guess go join another Discord on top of everyone <laughs> out there. Yeah. Yeah, so, the Patreon question Patreon of the week. Patreon question of the week. You yes, can have folks. your own question, and please do uh, for, I think it's, you need to be at the $5, but is it the $1? Two. Two dollars. At the $2 uh, um, tier, you can add a question. You can add as many questions as you want, and we encourage that, actually. Yeah. We really like it when somebody goes on and adds, you know, 10 or 15 questions, because it gives us a lot more variety. Sometimes yes. we combine them, and uh, you know, sometimes we we ask yes, all sir. of them. And it's, it's good. So but, this one is actually one of the few that we've gotten that's aimed at a specific crubber, and thankfully he's here. I was really oh, oh no no I, I it was my Patreon question because I'm also a patron. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really curious. <laughs> I asked what, the question. <laughs> what? Okay. Ruin my whole segue. Sorry. Um, <laughs> buckets, aka all hail buckets, aka Nico, aka that one right there. Asks, yep. what's the weirdest thing you still have committed to memory? Yeah. So okay. So let me let me just say the logic that I used to pick this question this week was that um, we want to give the people their money's worth. We don't have a full four man pod, so um, you know, bang out a bang out one that I that I've been wanting to know about you guys because why not? Uh, I have an answer if you guys want me to go first. Yes, please. Okay. Um, so actually, okay, I lied. I have two answers. The first answer, I don't think I can say on air because it is the opening monologue, essentially, from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. He does this, like, song where he's starting off just, like, saying the F word a whole lot. Uh, and then eventually they come around to these two kids buying like a bag of weed from them and he stays in song but like not a serious song like it's diegetic like he's like I don't know and then he ends the journey at Morris Day and the time singing Jungle Love (laughs) and Mm. it's like and I know like most of it if not the whole thing I've seen that movie like maybe 10 years ago and that opening scene just like stuck with me for some reason. Mm. The other thing for me, and I know this is going to sound like a cop out perhaps, but like I know 
a surprising amount of the dialogue verbatim from the movie The Other Guys by Will Ferrell. Um, it's, it's the movie where Will Ferrell and Marky Mark are like the B tier cops to the rock and Samuel L. Jackson who die at the beginning of the movie because they were chasing, uh, okay. A criminal. And they, they like dive off of the end. They like dive off of a building head first to like try and catch these people. It great, is a crazy uh, movie. Great elevator room pitch, though. I have to say, I've never heard of this movie, but I'm like, okay, uh, oh, that's a fun idea, dude. There's it is a super enjoyable. It's a good couple film. couple things that didn't age well, but otherwise, the rest of the movie is still like prime middle budget comedy. I miss them. I love them. Mm-hmm. I think we Do need a desk more. Pop. Do a desk pop, exactly, dude. A desk pop is like the best meme of all time. To- like, okay, Chris, a desk pop is when. <laughs> You is when you fire off your gun at your desk. <laughs> so obviously yeah. it's not a real thing. <laughs> not right? a real but, thing. But in the movie, because they're the new guys, uh, the other people are like, yeah, we all just yeah, fire off desk pops sometimes. Why don't you do it? Yeah, and he's they, like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, of course. And then he does it, and everybody's shocked that he shot his gun in the middle of a police station yeah. at the roof. Uh, right, it's that like kind of humor. The air. It's, it, oh, and it's, it's the movie where Mark Wahlberg learns to do ballet dancing in order to make fun of people. And he's a really good ballet dancer because he learned it just to ironically to make fun of me. Will Ferrell the, literally um, is like, you learned how to ballet dance ironically. It's so funny. The Samuel L. Jackson death scene <laughs> is one of the funniest moments in <laughs> comedy cinema in a long it's time. It's so really, good. it's worth watching just Dude, the first 20 minutes aim, alone. Aim for the it's bushes. So aim for the bushes. It, it's, it's very, so very funny. Good. And um, I realized I watched it like two years ago and I, rem- I realized I know like most of the dialogue kind of like verbatim as I'm watching it. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I guess, uh, since Chris is handling some tech issues right now, that yeah. I had, um, I, I guess, with this question of the the weirdest thing I still have committed to memory, it is more of a fact than anything, and right. uh, it's a weird fact, too. Uh, I know that <laughs> at the beginning of Google's history, Bill Gates was receiving four million emails a day. Wow. That's, uh, I don't... Like, I don't really know why I know this fact, but I know he's receiving 4 million uh, emails a day and 80% of them were asking for money. Uh, and that's, <laughs> that's really funny to me. And it's just a, yeah. one of those little factoids that's like stuck in my head, you know? God, imagine having getting 4 million emails a day asking you for money. <laughs> you wouldn't even be able to get, like, at that point, it's just nothing. It's like literally nothing. Wow. Yeah. Chris, you wanna you wanna tell us yours and then walk us out? Yes, I do. I don't have anything specific I can think of, but I will remember in a one off um just occurrences on the internet that just seems to be what I think of. Like I watched the um little uh, pizza degreasing video once, maybe eight years ago, and I can still recall perfectly in my head him sadly sitting on his carpet looking up at his camera, patting Domino's pizzas with a paper towel, which I guess when I say that out loud, how could that not imprint on your mind? But <laughs> I, I didn't even remember it until you were, you know, started saying it. And then it's like, oh yeah, so, no, I remember that too. He'll be like, oh, I buy five pizzas, you know, and I put three in the fridge and then I degrease the pizza and he just sits there for like 15 minutes just patting pizzas with paper towels. It's stuff like that, that... I um, think you've determined my dinner for the night. <laughs> yeah. I am actually, I have a pizza uh, on yeah, the way. I, I, I kind of want, yeah, I kind of want some pizza. I'm going to order it as soon as we get to that exclusive post show that you can access at patreon.com slash crub. Uh, folks, we good to, we good to wrap it up. I guess so. I'm still going, sorry. but we'll go. Oh, Everyone, sorry, Chris, have bad. a good night or else. <laughs> <laughs>